the pastor's heart. Dominic Steele here this afternoon. Our guest today, Craig Hamilton, and we're talking about assessment in the ministry pipeline. Now, Craig is the new senior minister at Pitt Town Anglican Church in Northwest Sydney. He has a new book in the works, Wisdom in Leadership Development. And there are things that are in it, uh, obviously convictions, but discipleship and leadership culture as well. Our focus today on how do we develop leaders and in order to develop leaders, we need to know how to assess leaders. The book itself, when it comes out, I think it's going to be a significant rock in the pond for lots of us to shake up on how we go about all sorts of things, how we structure our ministry pipelines, leadership recruitment, training and coaching, and of course, monitoring or assessing what's happening in the ministry. One of the guys from our church is sub-editing the book, and uh, he told me he keeps getting distracted and caught up in the narrative and has to stop himself and say, no, 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 I'm supposed to be thinking about where the commas go. <laughs> Craig Hamilton, thanks for coming in. Um, before we get to leadership and assessment, let's start with your pastor's heart because you've just started a new gig. Yeah. That's right. I am the new senior minister at Pitt Town Anglican Church. This is, I think this is week 10. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess the thing that I would say about where the heart is, the pastor's heart, is I am just, I am loving this church. I love these people. I love the staff. Mm -hmm. I love the you know parish council kind of leadership people. Mm -hmm. Just loving it, mm -hmm. loving them. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm not. It's got nothing to do with me per se. I didn't build this church, or do I've just rocked up to it. Mm. And I, th I feel as though I am... You're the newest member, really. Yeah, I, uh, yeah <laughs> I've been meeting all these new people saying, hey, I'm newer than you. Like, <laughs> welcome me to your church. But um, I really do feel like I'm building on the fruit of someone else just yeah. to mash those Yeah, metaphors Greg Peasley's up. been a friend of mine, been uh, the senior minister there for a long time until yes. his death last year and um, a great man and um, you're, you've got big shoes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I feel like I am really building on Greg's work mm. now um assessing leaders we're not good at it there's a quote in your book that not assessing leaders is unloving and unrealistic what did you mean by that yeah i mean i think we in order to build leaders we have to be assessing them in terms of we need to know where they're up to what they're good at what they need to grow in and so it's unloving to not do that in the sense that, you know, if we send someone in to go do some task and we don't think they can do it, then we're just sending them in to what? To fail. fail yeah. Struggle, quit. Mm -hmm. That's not very loving, but it's also... So you've got to assess the leader before they go in and as they're going on. Yeah, I think that's right. They need to be able to, at least to some level, do what we're asking them to do. But two, I think it's unloving in the sense that it's unloving to the people that they're leading or serving. You know, if we send someone in to go serve these kids and they can't do the job, then they're not actually serving those kids. Mm -hmm. They might have a servant heart, mm -hmm. but they're not serving those kids. And depending, I guess, on the size of the role, if they can't do it, the things that they're supposed to do are going to implode under them. Right, exactly. So it's unloving, but it's also unrealistic because we're assessing things all the time. We're assessing people all the time. You know, after church, people leave and in the car on the way home, what do they do? They're assessing what just happened. Mm -hmm. Maybe the sermon, mm -hmm. maybe a conversation, maybe a person, maybe the service, but we're always assessing things. Mm -hmm. So it's happening anyways. The question's not, are we assessing the people on our teams? Mm -hmm. The question is, how are we doing it? Mm -hmm. Are we doing it well? And are we doing it accurately, I mm -hmm. suppose? Mm -hmm. Um and yet we're not good at it. We're notoriously bad at it. Mm. Yep, yep. The research is in. They've been doing lots of in the kind of- So it's of... not just you and me that are bad at it. Everybody's bad at it. <laughs> so it seems. I don't think it's just us. Right, okay. They do not, that they've put all this research up um, from probably like 1982 and then 98, 2000, 2010, where that they've looked at people's assessments of others. So in 20... So we're, we're talking not just staff, but volunteers, everyone. Everyone, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Just humans assessing humans. And the, the research is that we basically can't do it, especially when the task that we're trying to assess is complex. 
So in 2000... I mean, how bad are we? Apparently we are horrendous. So in 2000, the, uh, a piece of research came out called Understanding the Latent Structures of Job Ratings or mm -hmm. something like that. It's a really kind of catchy title. And what they found, they did about 4,400 ratings of people like you mm -hmm. and they had two bosses two peers and two people under them so kind of that 360 them. review kind right, of thing. A 360 rating and what they found was they wanted to work out how much of that rating is about the job performance how much of it is just random something and how much of it is about the rater mm-hmm what they found was 21% of those ratings was about the actual performance of the ratee, mm -hmm. 21%. And 62% was about the rater. So when I rate you, the majority of what I'm rating is got literally nothing to do with you. 62% mm -hmm. of it is about me. They called it the idiosyncratic rater effect. What that means is we're basically terrible at rating other humans. Mm -hmm. But we have to do it. We do it all the time. Mm. I mean, I remember, I'm just, as you say that, I'm just remembering um, uh, I made some bad staff appointments a while ago and I was feeling quite despondent about it. And um, it was quite a long time ago. Um, and I was talking to Philip Jensen, who was then the Dean of Sydney. And uh, he said to me, Dominic, I think I'm a better assessor of people than most people. And I was very quick to say, well, I think you're better at it than me. Do you know? I'm, and I'm absolutely clear he's better at assessing people than yeah. me. And then he said, and I think I get it right about 50% of the time. Mm. And I mm. thought, wow, well, what, what chance have I got? And I'm sure I'm nowhere near as astute at reading people as he is. And so just anecdotally, I feel like I fluke it. Do you know? It's extremely hard, you know, and, and, and it's hard. Let's say we were going to rate someone on um, teamwork. Mm -hmm. What makes that so hard is that teamwork is not, it's not just a thing. It's, it's not one thing. It's, it's a collection of maybe a hundred things. It's, do you turn up on time? Are you kind? Do you put forward your ideas? Are you flexible? Are you a good listener? It's blah, 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 blah. It's like a, it's like a hundred things. And so then when we say, well, I give you a four out of five in teamwork, it's like, what does that even mean? Mm. Like, have you, what have, what have I actually kind of in my head done? Have I listed out all 100 things rated you on all of them, weighted them appropriately, and then aggregated them and said, four. Okay. Oh, surely not. You've spent six minutes telling us the job is really hard, but you've got a chapter in this book telling us how to do it. <laughs> so yep. what do we do? <laughs> well, one thing to do is just to be aware that we're not good at it. I mean, that's important, right? That I'm not just not to just trust myself, that I can just do it. That's mm -hmm. number one. But, but I think number two, one of the things that I like to do, I think it's important, is to have people self-evaluate mm -hmm. themselves. Now, in the research, self-evaluation is absolutely the worst. Self-evaluation has 72% idiosyncratic rater effect. It's not anywhere close to being right. We're terrible at rating ourselves. Mm -hmm. but, so we, I've got a ministry role, um, camera person, or I've got um, leading the technical crew or leading the band or leading the kids ministry and you're saying whether it's a paid position or a volunteer position I say how do you think you'd go in this yep would I get them to I'm just making it practical if I'm if it if I'm really thinking of employing this person would I get them to write it down what I do what I would do is I would create a self-assessment thing with questions mm -hmm. where I've broken up what I think I would like them to do you know is it I do you turn up on time? Do you, does the meeting finish on time? Uh, do you come prepared? Blah, blah, just kind of real practical, concrete mm -hmm. self-assessment things. Are you praying for the people that you lead? All that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. 
and then have them rate themselves one, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. And why that's good is it might not be accurate, but it tells me what they think. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's wrong in terms of do they actually turn up on time, but it's correct in that it's what they think. And that's important. I want to know what they think. If they think they're doing a great job, but I think they're not. But, but are you talking about before I employ them or while they've been doing it for three months? Maybe or three months, six so, months. But, but would you give it year? to them before or would you give it to them at that time? Well, I'll probably give it to them after they've started. Mm -hmm. This is how, how am I going to assess how they're going? Mm -hmm. Where do I need to help them? That kind of thing. Right, okay. They would do a bit of a self assessment. But I'm not really looking for whether it's true or not, I'm looking for what they think. Mm -hmm. And you're doing this with people? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So tell us about some of the last couple of ones that you've done. Yeah, so same thing. People will fill this thing out. And then when we meet, we just, they, I have it, they have it. And sometimes I think they're right. Sometimes I don't think they're right. But, you know, if they think they're, they're a good listener but I maybe don't think they're a good listener, then it at least helps me that I know they think they are. So it helps me to frame how I'm going to talk about it. I'm not going to come in as hard because what I'm going to do is I'm going to be saying I think they're wrong. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so it just helps me to be wise and careful and loving in the way I come at that. I still need to come at it. But if they think they're already not very good at that, then I can come at it in a different way. Mm -hmm than if I, I already know they think they're good. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So it sounds like when you're thinking about an employee, you've, you've written an appointment letter, it's got a number of uh, criteria of things that you're expecting them to do. You'd actually say, use that as the template for how do you think you're going at this yep. for my discussion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Cool. yep. Okay. So I want them to kind of self-evaluate. But another thing I want to do is maybe have them evaluate the ministry itself. So every three months, we would get new volunteers to evaluate the ministries they were in. When I used to work in like a normal job, you, you know, you have your three month probation mm. period, then they would evaluate you mm -hmm. then. We flipped it around and a new volunteer would have a three month probation period and then they would assess the ministry. Mm -hmm. now you told me a story about you getting in trouble for this <laughs> At a supermarket, was it? Yeah. yeah, I used to work in like a retail chain. And, um, and the boss would say, you know, we love honesty here and tell us what you think and what we could improve. That's the kind of place we are. And so I did. And I th I'm pretty sure I was kind and gentle. I may not have been, but I think I was. Maybe and kind, gentle, but blunt. I, I may have been, yes. Yeah, okay. And I got a written warning for it, for giving some feedback. And everyone else afterwards said, oh, yeah, oh, gosh, you should not have done that. That's not what you do here. You just roll on. And I just felt like, man, if I ever lead a team, if I ever have people that I, who work for me, that's, I don't want that, that to ever have to happen. I want people to be able to say what they think and not get in trouble and not be afraid they could say what they think, even if they think what I think is stupid. Mm -hmm. They should be allowed to say it. Mm. Anyways, so we would have them, a new volunteer, assess the ministry. You know, have, has the purpose and vision of this ministry been explained to you well? Do you understand what your role is supposed to be? Do you feel cared for and supported? What do you think the best thing about this ministry is? Where do you think this ministry needs to improve? blah, blah, blah. And when we would have them assess it and then we would speak with them. And you'd get the leader of that particular ministry area to have that conversation yeah, with the person. Right. Yeah. Yep. yep. And the reason why was to kind of set a tone of we want to improve. We mm -hmm. don't think this is the best thing ever. And we know someone who's new sees things in a different way than those of us who've been running this thing for 10 years. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So... Would you, I'm just thinking aloud here, I mean, uh, you, you could even set up an automated thing that sends them the, the questionnaire, do you know, yep. and then alerts their person that, to have that conversation. Yep. Yeah, yep, yep. 
Do you so, do that? Or? No, ours is always just very a bit more manual. haphazard. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> every three months, but it's it's we have to do it. And, but you are doing that. that in the ministry areas that you're supervising. I mean, it's new well, days at Pitt Town. Not at Pitt Town, but but, in, but that's the plan at Pitt Town, and it's what you were doing at the past yeah, place, Glenmore right. Park. That's right. right. Every three months, uh, self evaluation where they would evaluate the ministry, and then we would give them the end of year self evaluation, mm-hmm. so they could see the kind of things we were expecting them to do. Mm-hmm. And then in kind of November or so, they would fill out a self-evaluation and their team leader or whoever would then meet with them to talk about it. And the result of the thing is much better discussion about how all sorts of things work. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And where people might need to improve or what they want to do. We would always give people an off-ramp if they it was they've had enough of this ministry and it's time to go somewhere else there was always a chance to do that Mm -hmm. so we we would just have all those kind of open and honest conversations that's right that's right now what about um assessing now we've talked about self-evaluation what about assessing the other because i do have to do that yes you do and you will yeah now the challenge is because we know we're not very good at it and we know when things are composite you know big teamwork strategic thinking, Mm -hmm. they're too big. Mm -hmm. So one thing to do is to break them all into smaller pieces. So we can, it's much easier to assess, do I turn up on time, Mm -hmm. right? You can assess that. Or, you know, do I I ask questions? Do I, am I encouraging? You You can assess those kind of things a lot easier than just, how's Craig at teamwork? That's, that's too hard. So you can break it down into smaller things and we're generally better at that, mm-hmm. of assessing those kind of things. That's one thing to do. But another thing is to try and... Sometimes re- it's hard for me as the person over them to work out what's going on under them. Oh, totally. Yep. So in, in that case, if it's you and then there's a person and a team, you might want to have what's called a skip layer meeting where you skip this one mm-hmm. and you meet with their direct reports. Mm-hmm. You could do that. I used to do that where you would just talk about how's things and how's stuff and how's the ministry and you get a bit of a sense about how their leader is. It can be quite a threatening thing though for this person who's in the middle. So you need to do it wisely and carefully. Would you do that as a routine thing? I mean, it sounds like some of the other things you've talked about have been routine, routine Whereas this one might be if I feel like there's something wrong. Yeah, well, I used to try, I was on my way to trying to make it regular. I didn't ever quite arrive there, but I was trying to, to do once a year or once every six months, a skip layer and just meet with those, um, you know, the team leaders team. Mm -hmm. Right. Just to to ask them, how's the ministry and how are you? Partly it's because I want to be able to, work out, am I getting the truth mm-hmm. coming up? But also because, I mean, I care about these mm-hmm. people and they'll be the people who will be the next team leaders. Mm-hmm. So I kind of want to know them and how they're going and, you know, have a bit of a, mm-hmm. of a relationship with them. Okay. What else do I do to assess? Well, it's to reframe how we think because we're not good at analyzing the other person and what they can do and not do. That's quite hard. Instead, just to try and reframe some of those questions to be about not what I think about them, but what will I do? Mm -hmm. So for example, instead of trying to think, is this person good at teamwork? I might ask, do I want to work with this person every chance I get? Mm -hmm. because that's what I'll do and I can I can assess what I will do and that's going to tell me about them as a team you know Mm. as being part of a team or I might ask a question like would I recruit this person if I could start again if I knew now what I knew that if I knew then what I knew now would I recruit them again and that might tell me something about Mm. what I'm thinking about them. Mm. You know I, mean, I mean, often when I get asked to write a reference for somebody, one of the questions is, if you had the opportunity, would you employ, invite this person back to your team? Exactly. Yeah. And that's the kind of thing they're trying to get at because we're not always good at assessing, but we know what 
we, we want. would do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got a question here from Andrew Marrett on Facebook. He said, hi, Craig, big time fan. Just wondering if you could uh, comment on the assessment of individuals versus the need of the church. If we've assessed that somebody has a whole bunch of character shortcomings, however, they're the only one putting their hand up to serve in a certain ministry, how do we navigate that space? I mean, I'd also add that to competency shortcomings and conviction yeah. shortcomings as well. So maybe a, give us that's ABC. That's a great question. Yeah. I think, you know, if there's massive character issues, if, and it, I guess it depends what they are, but if there's massive issues, then uh, but the church is needing someone to do that thing, then we'll just have to go without that thing being yeah. done because yeah. that's so important. Mm. If there's massive character problems, if there's minor character problems... That could be worked on. We could work on these, right? All of us have some mm. minor character problems, then we might... It, so it, it kind of depends on what it is. But if they're massive character issues... We, that's, we're just not going to have that person. If there's massive competency issues, then again, it's complex. It depends. Maybe we can work with this person and build them. Maybe we can get people around them to fill in where they're not good. Maybe the team leader, or it's going to be me perhaps, needs to be more present and doing more things and coaching. And we're going to take a longer view on this not going to put them in now, but we're going to, over the next year, get them to a point where mm. they can. So it's complicated, but, but the, the, the key thing, though, is if we've assessed that their character's not where we want it or where we need it, then I think we need to be strong enough to say, I don't think it's the right time for this, and we're just going to have to go without because, you know, character is king. Mm. Mm. That's, I guess that's what I yeah. would say. Okay, so you've helpfully said that um, when I'm assessing the person, I'm not necessarily just to think about how I assess them, but can they do the thing and would I ask them to do this, to break it down into that task. Once I've formed that view, because I want to be other person-centred towards them, how do I, where do I go from there? How do I help them? Yeah, do you mean that we've, I've worked out there's this role they could be good, but I haven't recruited them into it? Or are you thinking they're in the role and I need to have a conversation? And there's a problem and I've assessed that there's a problem. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to ask both. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. Very good. Um, I mean, I don't think I'm very good at this. That would be the first thing I would say. But you wrote the book. Yeah, yep. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not very good at it. Okay. Um, but I think what well, I would... That gives me as much hope as Philip Jensen's <laughs> conversation did. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I just, I don't like those kind of meetings. I yeah. don't enjoy them. But I think I would meet and I would say, hey, look, here's what I think I've observed. Do you think that's right? Because maybe I'm wrong, you mm -hmm. know, because so, I'm aware I'm not a very good assessor of others. So I would say, look, here's what I think I've noticed. Is that right? Do you think that's right? Maybe they'll say no, and then that's a much harder you know, path, mm -hmm. they might say, yeah, I think that's exactly right. And then I would say, yeah, I think that's, I think that's right. I think I would like us to work on this. Mm -hmm. What I want to do is I don't want to make this a confrontational mm -hmm. thing, right? I want us, we're on the same team. We're going to look at this issue. What I don't want is to, is to freak you out, mm -hmm. right? I don't want you to get stressed and feel like this is a fight. Because if it's a fight, then it's either going to be fight or flight, right? You'll mm -hmm. either, like your brain's going to shut off or it's going to be, you're going to come at me, you know, maybe verbally. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to make it, it's, I'm not devaluing you. I'm not saying you're not a good person. I'm saying, I think here's this competency thing that I think I've seen. Let's work on it. I want to help you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's the kind of framing that I want to put it in so that we're on the same team on this. And it's not about your value as a person. It's just a thing that we could improve. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So that's, I think, kind of the big, the big thought that I want to have. Because I know that, you know, the human, the, that when I get stressed, what happens is my brain is just flooded with, you know, stress hormone, mm -hmm. cortisol, and it shuts my brain down. And I revert into my kind of old 
lizard brain mm -hmm. where I'm going to either run away from this or I'm going to fight. Mm -hmm. That's not what I want. I want I want your brain totally switched on, right? So we can think about stuff and reason together. Mm -hmm. So I, it needs to be, this is not a fight. Mm -hmm. This is us working on something external together. Mm -hmm. That's the big thing. Hey, um, this isn't directly related to what we're talking about, but um, as I think about my staff, uh, they're all department heads. Uh, and actually, if you ask what is their role description, it's actually to achieve the outcomes for their department. That's, mm. that's the goals they're looking for. Mm. And so how different do you, I mean, I think that's, that's, that's how I, I do it, but do you do it like that? Is that what you would see your, um, uh, your, your staff, or would you give them a separate job description to the outcomes of their departments? Um, that's a good question. I think the thing I would say is it's important for people like us or who have a team leader type person yeah. to hold them accountable for team leader type things. Mm -hmm. And the, the risk is that we might hold them accountable for the wrong things. So mm -hmm. for example, you know, you, you might have your kind of membership welcoming integration person yeah. mm -hmm. and you might say to them, hey, I saw that, um, you know, Jim and Jenny weren't welcomed. That, that's a problem. And we need to fix that. And that's fine. But what you're, what you're teaching them is the easiest way to solve that problem is for them just to go and welcome them. Mm. That's not what I want them to do. You, yeah, know? you want the culture of the welcoming team really humming. Right. Yeah. So instead, I just need to reframe my question or my feedback to, hey, I saw that you, your team didn't welcome Jim and Jenny. Right. Mm -hmm. And so then she, your kind of membership person can't easily solve that problem by just them doing it themselves. Mm -hmm. Cause that's not what I've said. Yeah. The problem was your team didn't. So what you're them. looking for from the team leader or the department head is actually not so much that the music is great, but that the team is functioning really well. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the kind of thing I want to hold them accountable for the right things, not just make this task happen but to do their job, which is to lead their team and have their teams do those tasks. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And that's, I think, I used to make that mistake all the time. I would just say, this task didn't happen, mm -hmm. which just means uh, all I'm doing is training them for them just to do that task. Mm. That's the opposite of what I actually really want. What mm -hmm. I want them to do is build their team. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably the key bit, whether it's in the role description or it's a separate thing or it's outcomes or whatever it is, mm -hmm. it's that doesn't really matter. we're holding them accountable for the right things. Yeah. I think that's the key, the mm -hmm. key bit. Yeah. Um, uh, so you've had the conversation. What if you haven't got the result you want? Yeah, like as in they've said... Oh, that's probably the next chapter of the book. No, I think I'm great. Yeah, that's probably a different book. I don't know what to do when that happens. Have another go. Great. Craig, thanks so much for coming in this afternoon. Pleasure. My guest on The Pastor's Heart, Craig Hamilton, uh, and his book, Wisdom in Leadership Development, coming out in a couple of months' time. We shall look forward to that. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you next week.